Chapter 33 Part 1 We travel in silence, except for the radio in the background. He doesn't have it loud as he always had it before, but it's a soothing and calming noise. How serene after the scene with Meg. I spend most of the journey debating on my decision to come with Chris and whatever the hell he wants to show me. He repeatedly exhales his breath as if intending to say something, but decides against it. We have been driving for an hour when he finally pulls his car up to see Quincy Street, and into the Quincy North parking lot. As I let myself out, I can see the blue ocean close by us, maybe a few walking distances. I can even smell the salty water with a hint of fish scent and rows of boats lined up for miles and miles beyond the horizon. Are you just going to just stand there gawking at the ocean? Or are you coming? Chris teases me. What are we doing here, Chris? I ask. He rolls his eyes. Isn't it obvious? I'm taking you sailing. Remember that was one of our agreements, first I took you to the auto shop, and now I am going to take you sailing. Really? I ask and I can't seem to hide my smile. Yes really, he says and rolls those blue eyes at me again. I want to roll my eyes at him, but since he is taking me sailing, I've decided against it. Come, he says as he takes my hand and I look down to where his rough hand touches mine. I have to admit when we hold hands, it brings a giddy smile to my face. We stroll with molded hands together, heading to the docks. It's a beautiful day, a little cold, but not too bad, and as we come nearer to the docks, the boats become immensely gigantic. I also notice a huge red building that has enormous white capital lettering, that says, QIC. Chris, what is that building? I ask. This is a club, for people to do activities such as sailing. He points to the red building and says, those letters stand for Quincy Yacht Club. It was established in 1847. If you want to, you can rent this building for special general get-togethers such as weddings and fundraisers. This would be a beautiful place to get married. He hesitates and shrugs. Yeah, I guess so. I assume Chris is not into marriage, not that I plan to get married soon, but I hope in the future to be married, someday. Chris leads me to the docks, where I come across a monohull, and on the edge of the boat, I see the name Suave attached to the vessel. Is this your boat? I ask. Yes. I noticed you named your boat after your last name. Well, I did not name this boat. It was actually my grandfather who named it. He owned it. I think I already told you, he left me everything, including this boat. Yes, you did. I just did not know you owned your own boat. So, you're ready to go sailing, or do you want to just stand here all day? He laughs. I roll my eyes and take it upon myself to climb up onto the boarding stairs and head aboard to where I am standing beneath the headsail. I go to the railing and as I stand at the steel rail around the edge of the wooden deck, I grip it with both hands while I close my eyes and tilt my head back to catch the sun's warmth. I notice Chris still standing out on the dockside and I call out to him, aren't you coming aboard? I glimpse over at him and he shakes his head while smiling. He strides aboard and says, you are something else, Sashiana. I grin and shrug my shoulders. I ignore his comment and look around the deck, there's a deckhouse in the center. I notice there are seats that can seat about six people, and I wander over to them and sit down. I glance down and look toward the blue South Pacific when I turn to the bow to catch sight of Chris unfastening the ropes. He moves to the cockpit, presses some type of large black button, and the engine comes to life. I know a great deal about cars, but I have no idea about sailboats or anything that has to do with sailing. He grabs hold of the steering wheel and sails off slowly, further out from the shore. Soon we are out in the open sea. I feel the cool wind run across my skin and it feels heavenly with the ocean breeze. The waves are loud under the howl of the wind, the salty air is refreshing. I can't believe I am actually sailing. Since I could remember, I have always wanted to be out in the ocean, and now that I am here, especially sailing with Chris, it's like a dream. Sushiana, come over here, he yells, bringing me out of my dream and into reality. In confusion, I approach Chris and stand a few inches from where he is, steering us further out to sea. He chuckles and says, I do not bite. Come closer to me. 
I don't move, and I do not know why I don't come next to him, my feet feel molded to the ground somehow. He rolls his eyes, leaving the steering wheel for a second, and comes over and pulls me close to him. He places my hands on the wheel. I look up at him with horror in my eyes. Chris, I've never sailed before. I can't sail this boat, my voice squeaky, revealing the fear I have at this very minute. It's very easy, a little kid can sail. He mocks me. I put my hands in the air and shout, and no, I can't. He stops me from talking by placing my hands back on the wheel and his hands pleasantly set over mine. Yes, you can. I will help you. We continue to sail out into the open water and head south. I am beaming with excitement. I never knew that sailing could be such fun. But again, I think it has to do with Chris by my side and him gripping my hand so delightfully, it's a pleasant feeling being this close to him. Here, he lets go of my hands and I frown at the loss of contact. You take charge. What? I yelp. He can't be serious, I can't drive this thing by myself. I might crash into something or worse, crash into another boat. All right, I am over panicking because there's nothing I could wreck into, but still. I could get us lost or... Sushiana, you can do this. Stop debating with yourself. I need to loosen the sails, and when I say to cut off the engine, do it, okay? Wait, you are actually leaving me to do this by myself. I say panicky. Yes, he grins like he's enjoying this. You'll do fine, just do as I tell you, and press this button, here. He points to the large black button. It will shut off the engine. He's got to be kidding me. He laughs. Do not be nervous. He reassures me as he kisses me on the corner of my cheek and I smile at him. He then goes over to the sails and unravels the ropes. As soon as the ropes become undone, I watch as the headsail flies up to where the wind catches it and instantly I feel it on the wheel. Holy shit. Turn off the engine. Chris yells through the harsh wind. I nod and press the button. The roar of the engine cuts off, and the boat soars toward the South Pacific. I grip the wheel tightly and hold it steady. My knuckles are turning white from gripping the wheel firmly. This is nerve-wracking, but at the same time, it feels amazing. This boat can move through the water smoothly and fast just like a car. All right, this is my new favorite hobby. I see in the corner of my eye that Chris heads down to the deckhouse and I shout, Chris. Don't leave me to do this by myself. He doesn't listen and he has left me to steer this boat alone. I can't believe that bastard left me. I continue to watch the sea in front of me and say to myself, you can do this. If I get us lost, it would be Chris's fault because he should not have left me to do this alone. After a while, Chris comes back with two wetsuits and places them on the ground next to me. Wetsuits. What the hell is he doing with those? Oh gosh, I hope he is not planning for us to go swimming. Let's stop the boat and go swimming. I would hold on to the wheel if I was you, he grins as he goes to the bow and I see a long chain attached to the anchor. He then lowers the chain. Once he lowers most of the chain into the water, he then ties a rope and attaches it to the bow cleat. He goes over to my body and looks at me while smirking as he places his hand on the engine to increase the speed, and instantly the boat jolts to a stop. I hold on to the wheel firmly as I was told when Chris grabs hold of me and his hands launch onto my waist. I guess you were not holding on to something. I tease Chris. As a matter of fact, I was holding on to something, and trust me, I like to hold on to you, especially your hips. I blush to a deep shade of red from his obnoxious comment. So, are you ready to go swimming? Chris asks me. Oh no. I am not going swimming, I shake my head and say, especially in late November. The water is freezing around this month. He chuckles as he picks up the wetsuits from the floor and holds them up. That's why we have these. The wetsuits help keep body heat. He waits for a minute and then says with a smirk. Unless you want to wear no clothes and go skinny dipping.